Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 1 of the chapter Chemical Equilibrium. Before I come to the topic, I would first like to draw your attention to what comes to your mind when you think of equilibrium. I'll just cite one or two examples to you. Have you ever seen in a circus the trapeze artist who tries to walk on a rope? Have you noticed them walking on a rope? It appears that the person is hardly moving, you know, is really very, very careful and is walking on the rope very carefully and putting one step after it seems that minutes have passed before the person puts the step on the rope the next step. It's taking, it appears like the person is taking really, really long to do it and nothing is happening. While actually at that stage, do you think the person who's doing it, nothing is happening for him? A lot is happening. So much is happening because the rope may move. Gravity is acting on him. Atmospheric pressure is acting on the person. All the body and its muscles are acting up. Everything is playing and yet the person is trying to maintain a balance. The moment that balance goes off, you know what happens. The person falls off. And therefore, that person has to maintain that balance. So when we think of the word equilibrium, I would say that that person is in a state of equilibrium, a state of balance. So whenever I think of equilibrium, it, it actually indicates towards a stable state. A state that is stable, there is equilibrium, means there is a balance, there is a stability. It is not an, a state where nothing is happening. It's actually a state where maximum action is taking place. Everything is acting up. Everything when the person is walking on the trapeze, uh, on the rope, everything is there so much happening. So it is not a, an inactive state. It's a state where a lot of activity is taking place, yet it appears as if nothing is happening. Nothing is changing. You get the feeling that nothing is happening. What am I looking at? Let me give you another example. Let us try, let you, let me ask you to go and try and stand on your head against the wall. And you do it because you're very obedient, you always listen to me. <laughs> so you go and you put your head on the ground and you put your legs up and you're standing there. And your face is all red because you've never done this before. And you might fall any moment and but you are somehow maintaining that balance because you're you're really so obedient and you have to do what I told you. So what do I understand? Do I understand that nothing is happening here? You're doing nothing, you're just standing. Instead of standing on your feet, you're standing on your head. What's the big deal? But you are maintaining a balance and equilibrium. The moment that balance goes off, anything goes wonky you're down on the ground, you fall down. So citing these examples in real life and giving us an idea what equilibrium, what do we understand by equilibrium in real life? We understand that equilibrium is a state which is a state of a lot of activity yet which appears to be stable. So let us now extend that concept to chemistry. Let us take an example. We take a closed box or a container and the container is half filled with water and when it is half filled with water and there is initially we had a desiccant in the container. A desiccant means something that absorbs all the moisture. So there is no moisture in the, in the tank now or in the container and now I put water in it and I immediately seal it. So I did not allow any gas to pass through it. Let us say we had a pipe which was already connected to a water tank and once the desiccant was removed, there was no moisture in it, we added the water. Now we observe, if we, if we have a manometer here or uh, something that can measure the pressure, we will notice that slowly there appears to be a pressure, air pressure, a pressure of some gas in the jar. 
And why did we have it half filled? Because half of it should be allowed to, we want to leave it empty to see what happens. And what actually happens is that some molecules of water, they have higher energy and therefore they have so much energy that they can escape the surface of the liquid and come up in the form of water vapor. And anything which is in the gaseous state, when it hits the walls of a container, it exerts pressure. So these water vapor molecules which are present in the, in the jar up here, they start exerting pressure on the walls of the jar which is measured by the manometer that we have put in there. Now when this happens, what do we observe? Slowly we find that the, we start getting a reading that there is some pressure, there is some pressure, there is some pressure and the pressure of the gas is increasing. It means more and more, more and more water vapor is entering the empty jar. But after some time we observe that the manometer reading, it becomes static. It does not show any change in the level of mercury. And when it does not show a change, it means now the pressure, the vapor pressure, since there is only vapor here, there is no air, there is nothing in it. So the vapor that has added, that is exerting the pressure. And that vapor pressure of water at that temperature becomes fixed. And at that point, to us, it appears that nothing is happening. Why actually, that is the state where the trapeze artist is on the rope, where you are standing on your head, where maximum action is taking place. At this point, actually, maximum number of molecules are coming up into the, into the empty space. But at the same time, the same amount of molecules are re-entering, are going back into water because they are hitting the wall, they are hitting each other. Some of the molecules lose energy when they do that and they fall back into the liquid. And when they fall back into the liquid, they turn from the gaseous state, from the vapor state to the liquid state. So now, what do we observe? That the number of molecules entering and leaving is equal and it appears as if it's a static state. That nothing is happening. It has acquired equilibrium. But it is not a static state. It's not a quiet state where nothing is happening. It's a very dynamic state. By dynamism, we mean there's a lot of action taking place. So it's a dynamic state. And this state, at this state, we say that water has acquired equilibrium with its water vapor, with the water vapor. And water and water vapor are in equilibrium with each other. So if you have a liquid and a vapor, and you assume that you started with the liquid, then the liquid is the reactant and the vapor is the product, if we write it in chemical forms. Then a double arrow shows the state of equilibrium. A double arrow would show a state of equilibrium and the mixture of water and water vapor, that mixture which makes that is the reactants and the products together which are in equilibrium with each other, they are known as the equilibrium mixture. There is another example, real life example of equilibrium which is very very important for our life and that is the oxygen hemoglobin equilibrium. Do you know that hemoglobin, it picks up oxygen from the lungs and takes it to the muscles and at the muscles there is another equilibrium which is established which makes it lose the oxygen and then the hemoglobin it moves back to the lungs to pick up the oxygen again. So actually it's a complex, uh, many many equilibria are taking place in this process yet this particular equilibrium is of so much significance or importance to life because if hemoglobin was not there in our blood to carry the oxygen to the muscles, we would not have been able to live. The oxygen, whatever we breathed in, would not have been used by the body. So the transporter in the body of oxygen is hemoglobin and that's because of this chemical equilibrium that exists between oxygen and hemoglobin. So what happens when a person is carbon monoxide poisoned? Hemoglobin has a greater love for carbon monoxide molecule in comparison to oxygen. So if you inhale carbon monoxide instead of along with oxygen, the hemoglobin that comes to your lungs instead of attaching itself to oxygen, it establishes a much faster and a much better equilibrium with carbon monoxide. 
and it just gets stuck to that and the carbon monoxide blocks the hemoglobin forever. It is not going to leave it. It just combines with it very strongly and that is why carbon monoxide when the levels go higher and higher it starts blocking more and more hemoglobin molecules in your body and ultimately it leads to death because now hemoglobin is not available to carry the required amount of oxygen. So we find that equilibrium is, is in play in the entire universe at many many places and I would urge you to really look around you and see where do you see equilibrium around you. Moving on with it, equilibrium can be established for both physical processes and chemical processes. It, like this is just a physical change, it's a change of state and in chemical reactions also you have reactants turning into products and products turning back into reactants at the same time. So as soon as reactants are turning into products, this moment the products are formed, they start reacting with each other and giving back the reactants. So that this equilibrium can be established in both physical processes and in chemical processes. How fast a reaction takes place? It depends on the nature of the, um, of the reactants. It depends on the conditions of the reaction. Therefore, the rate of the reaction is something that can be managed and equilibrium, how quickly it will be established, will depend on the conditions. The rate can be, can, can be controlled by the conditions, by the nature of the reactants, by whatever conditions, whatever temperature is best for it. So, or whatever conditions, why is it not achieving equilibrium? Because the conditions are not appropriate. So the rate of reaction, it depends on the conditions and it depends on the nature of the reactants. We usually achieve this equilibrium in a closed vessel because if it's, imagine if I had this liquid water in uh, an open jar and I had just kept a glass half full with water and I wanted to observe the equilibrium. The vapors that would rise into the room which is so large would hardly have an effect on the vapor pressure. The pressure would hardly be measured by the manometer that I would be using because it's very little vapor in comparison to the atmospheric pressure that is already present in the room. Therefore, for this to be observable, you need a closed vessel. The concentration, okay. Now, when if you imagine these are the reactants and these are the products, if you started with a chemical reaction or even water, the water in the liquid state was the reactant and the vapors were formed. So water in the liquid state, the concentration of water in the liquid state will go on decreasing as the process uh, uh, continues and the, the concentration of the products will go on increasing at the same time because as reactants are being used up, products are being formed. So concentration of reactants is going on decreasing and products, the concentration of products initially was zero but it goes on increasing because it is being formed more and more, more and more till equilibrium is established. At that point, the rate at which the concentration of reactants decreases becomes equal to the rate at which the concentration of products also goes back into the reactants. So now it appears that they have established an equilibrium. But until equilibrium is established, the concentration of the reactants goes on decreasing and concentration of the products goes on increasing. And that is what we observed here in the vapor pressure also. That initially there was no vapor pressure and the vapor pressure kept on increasing till it reached equilibrium. So concentration of the product, which was the vapor, water vapor, it goes on increasing until it reaches equilibrium. At equilibrium, it becomes constant because both the opposing processes take place at the same rate. So what was happening was that do you think that initially when we saw the vapors rising, there were no molecules which were going back into the water? They were going back, but only we could not notice it because the rate at which the molecules were rising in the form of vapors was more than the rate at which the molecules were going back in the form of water. We only observe that when it becomes the rate of joining the water increases so much that both become equal. It is at that point we realize that, oh, what is happening? Nothing is happening. While actually both the processes are taking place at the same speed. The concentration, if you really see, the products going back into the re reactants is also a chemical reaction in the opposite direction. 
So as the concentration of, so for the backward reaction, the products are the reactants. So the products, as the concentration of the reactants decreases, the concentration of the products increases, it means the concentration of the reactants for the opposite process are increasing till they reach equilibrium and now the concentrations are such that the both the processes, opposing processes have the same rate. So we'll say that it goes on decreasing and that of products goes on increasing. For example, you had water in the liquid state, the concentration of water in the liquid state goes on decreasing and concentration of water in the gaseous state goes on increasing. And the rates of forward and backward reactions at equilibrium, they become equal. And when they become equal, at that point, whatever is the concentration of the reactant and the product, that becomes fixed. At, the, at equilibrium, the concentrations of reactants and the products, they become fixed. Now let us move on with our understanding of the types of equilibrium. Now we've understood what equilibrium is. Now based on the extent to which the reaction takes place before equilibrium is established. Do you know, when you look at this, you may have your, you know, um, a natural feel, uh, you would expect that half of the water should escape in the form of vapors. And uh, the equilibrium should be established somewhere between when 50% of the concentration of reactants has been used and 50% of the products have been formed. At that point, equilibrium should be achieved. But that is too much, that is too perfect, and life is not that perfect. Equilibrium can be established earlier, it can be established at a later time, and it can be that perfect also. So based on that, equilibria are divided into three categories. So based on the extent to which the reaction proceeds, equilibrium is, a uh, reaction equilibrium these are classified into three groups the first group is where now let us assume initially we started with the blue line and the blue line represents reactants the concentration of the reactants so as the reaction starts you know initially we started with only the blue line that is only the reactants and then the reactants started reacting with each other as they re start reacting with each other we start getting the green colored product so if the reaction it pro it starts producing products starts producing produces a lot of product and let us say 75 percent of the reaction of the reactant has been used up now you have only 25 percent of the reactant left while 75 percent of the product has been formed so reactions which we say this reaction has proceeded nearly to completion it has almost completed it would have gotten completed if equilibrium would not have been established we would have only got the green reactants and products the reactants reacted and they resulted in the formation of products but just before the reaction ended that equilibrium the opposing process became so strong that both the processes at that point the rates became equal and now it appears that this is the amount of product formed and this little reactant it has remained unreacted and it is not going to react now because equilibrium has been established so we said reactions which proceed nearly to completion in these the concentration of the reactants will be very less because a lot of the reactant has already been used up the second condition would be the other extreme that reaction in which a small amount of the reactant is used and a large a, a, a small amount of the product is formed and therefore a large amount of reactant remains unreacted now blue line was the reactants and only this much of product was formed and the equilibrium was established now the the concentrations of reactants and products have become constant so you will see that you're getting very little yield out of this reaction you carried out a reaction to get the products and equilibrium was established quickly so you got very little product from this reaction so these are reactions which in which a small amount of product is formed and these are where equilibrium is established very quickly and then there is a third category where there are comparable reactants and products which means they are almost equal or a little bit one may be a little bit more than the other so they are comparable reactants this is almost 50 percent you know close to 50 60 40 you could say so here you will have almost the amount of reactant which is left and the product that is formed would almost be equal why is this important to us to a chemist or to persons in industry 
because when we carry out reactions in industries and our intention is to get the product we can change the reaction conditions so that the reaction proceeds in such a way that very little reactant is left and you get more of the product the desired product that you want or if there's a process that takes place like rusting of iron and you don't want it to take place so you should change the conditions in such a way that the reaction slows down it does not take place so you would want that 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 to be uh, like this that you would like to shift the reaction to a side which is desirable so in order to do that our knowledge about when the equilibrium will be established first hand first we should have the knowledge about a reaction that when is the equilibrium going to be established under these conditions how can i change the conditions to get the desired change do i want more of reactant or do i want more of product what should i do to get the one that i want so we can say that the extent to which a reaction takes place it can be controlled by changing the conditions of the reaction or changing the concentration of the reactants maybe there is one reactant which is not letting the reaction take place so reducing that concentration or increasing that concentration may help the reaction so you can optimize the conditions of a reaction and that is the reason why we our knowledge of chemical equilibrium is important and that is why we are going to be studying this chapter now you know when you have an equilibrium which is in aqueous solution that is which is which are aqueous solutions water in which salts have been dissolved the salts they have ions in them so such equilibria so equilibria will be established in the aqueous form such equilibria are known as the ionic equilibrium so this is what we are going to be studying in the chapter so if you found the video helpful please give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel recommend it to your friends and please keep keep returning for more videos in chemistry thank you for watching and bye bye for now